you know, I don't skate as much as I did before. That's, I think, you know, uh, standard, you know, you grow up, you have, you know, you have more responsibilities, you know, I have a child now, I'm married, you know, you have bills, you know, back then I didn't have bills, you know, you wake up, you, uh, you don't even have a thought, you know, basically, or I didn't, you know, it's like, boom, wake up, do whatever, go skate, go do whatever, you know what I mean? Early on, Menace Days, it was hanging at my pad, really, to tell you the truth. My, actually, my chick's pad, now my wife. I remember like a lot of days being at like Billy's house, like everyone would just kind of meet there at night and just hang out and smoke or like drink or whatever. And he was like the show, you know what I mean? Like any, anytime Billy was around, whether he was at our house or like, you know, if it was at a spot, it was like everyone was around, he was in, in the middle and he was just like, you know, on 10, always. And it seemed like he wasn't like a, an everyday type of skater, but when he got on his board, he'd bang out something sick. So that was, that's what was dope about him. Where are you from? Born in Chicago, but raised in Los Angeles. So I, I consider myself a Los Angelino, I guess. Do you remember the first time hearing about or seeing any pro skaters? Like one of my friend's sisters uh, was dating some like Christian rock dude, long hair, like striper, you know, bandanas around, and he skated. Like, and he gave my friend um, a Ray Bones Rodriguez. Then I think first video I saw was like Future Primitive. I don't know, then you get psyched. You're like, dude, I want to be a Bones Brigade member. You know what I mean? So how did you end up becoming one? Ah, shoot, I don't know. Right place, right time, I guess. Uh, a lot of my friends already kind of skated for it. There would be crews of little skate groups, dude, and they would fucking skate from spot to spot. And like, you'd meet up sometimes and be like, oh, hey, what's up? And he was, you know, Billy, man. He was skating rad, you know? You know, he was part of Paulo's little crew of friends. Tell me about Paula Diaz. The local ripper, you know, since always. We met in high school. He came up to me and asked me if I wanted to bail from school and go, you know, hang out and just do stuff that we were not supposed to be doing. So did you, you skated for Powell on the, at the same time as him later? Yeah, yeah, we were on there at the same time. And you know, he kind of he kind of helped with all that too, you know. You know, he kind of pushed like for like me and Joey to get on. You know, he wanted us to tag along, we tagged along. Stacy happened to be at Los Feliz one day and he, he kind of liked the way a few of us skated, like Joey, this kid Ruben Prieto, and me. We filmed the part after that, never got released, and uh, Paula was like filming his like first, you know, solo part. And uh, everyone knows him as Paulo Diaz. You know, back in the day, everyone called him Pablo Diaz. That's, you know, I was like, dude, do you heard of this guy, Pablo Diaz? Like, oh, he all the six, fucking lost a tooth. Dude was like an urban legend Paul in the hood, bro. Bad. I remember, you know, and we used to call him Pablo. Yeah, we didn't I'll, know yeah, it was like, Paulo. Yeah. yeah. So back in the day, you know, we would just hear these like little stories about this guy named Pablo Diaz. What he did and things And you know, we'd go stuff. to a spot and be like, yeah, Pablo Diaz, man, he did this, there, that, there. Back in the 80s, little there was clicks. all kinds of crews and clicks of skateboarding clicks. And and and, he, and uh, we used to be in Mutants. And so we used to hang out with Paulo because Paulo was like the main dude in Mutants, you know? Yeah, Paulo was, was sick. Yeah. And there was another, like, a couple Korean dudes. What's his name? Chang? Sang? Sang. Sang. And, like, there was, you know, they used to all hang out right here at this school and another school called Dayton Heights. It's yeah. right down the street. And Paulo's from here? Paulo, yeah. Paulo's right a native. Yeah. Paulo's a native of all this right here, just like us. Yeah. Paulo and Billy Valdez. Just I, I ain't gonna lie, man. We, we used to always, like, trip out on him because he would be on the Jimi Hendrix. He'd be on, like, Told the opposite side of the spectrum, man. You know, yeah. we were always like into the hip hop, rap music. Did you get dressed like skater back then? Nah, no. we used to wear dickies. It was, was that crazy. it? Was that an influence from skating, or that was from? No, that was that was just bad gang influence, man. It wasn't that we were trying to bang or nothing. It was something normal. Hey, I used to come to where I'm from, yeah. like the way I look from New York. Steve and his sister Steve used to clown on me. Hey, and Steve meanwhile, I'm clowning on her the way Steve she looks. used to make fun of us. Yeah, like, yo, why you wear that? You know, because yeah. he didn't understand. Didn't and we used to make fun of him yeah. because he came over here with all this shiny, like, dressed like Slick Rick. And we're like, what, what's wrong with this dude, man? Really? Big chain gold teeth. Yeah. But... So we had, like, baggy clothes and white T-shirts. But it was cool because when he came, then we, you know, we got it. Got, we were exposed to his culture, where he came from, where he grew up seeing, and vice versa. Vice that was versa. cool, and then we yeah. connected. Were you guys trying to do something different, like menace? We were just being us. Yeah, man. We were just being us. I, I mean, we were just trying to tell you the truth. I wanted to just fit in and skateboarding, but I didn't want to like, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't know how it was gonna be. 
I just knew it was a dope company because it was coming out of world and Kareem had already a big name. But I think that uh, we were just being us, man. I loved everything about Menace. Everything about it. The graphics, the team, the swag, homies. You know, it was it was a good thing. And from from day, uh, actually from day one too, I'm gonna say that the name Menace I wasn't psyched on, but it grew on me. You know what I mean? It was like. Cause I thought it was like what, like fucking menace to society, like you know what I mean. I just thought like, I was thinking of the movie, but then it grew on me. You know, I think the name's fucking dumb. I don't know. He knew that we were actually at the time. I think we were skating a little bit different and just representing ourselves a little bit different than most kids. For all y'all half-ass niggas with your half-ass shit, eat a dick. I, I worked for extra large back in those days, like at the shop. Yeah. And so we had a we had a good connection, like with. Uh, with music and shit like you know, like or rap, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. cause Beastie Boys were involved. So like, I mean, like before Cypress Hill came out, like we all fucking had like you know I had like Cypress Hill's tape, T-shirt, blah yada yada yada. Oh, oh shit, Wu Tang stickers. <laughs> we were all listening to Wu Tang too at the time. I had a lot of influence in the original first like set of series, I should say. Like, you know, I mean, we all sat down together, you know what I mean? But like, you know, I have like a sketch with like the enter the enter the Wu Tang board. I, you know, I had I had sketched that down, thinking, oh yeah, this should be like just like a team board, boom. You know what I mean? But Shiloh came up with the title because at first I was like, I left that blank because I was like, enter what? What was the ad? Enter the Putang. There was like a photo. It was Kareem's idea, like, dude, let's shoot, let's shoot a, uh, like a Wu Tang uh, style ad, and that's kind of what we were doing at the time. So we like, let's do something like fully represents us, like boom. Caustic shows up with this model, and so our first thing is like. One, is she gonna get naked? You know what I mean? Like, and then like, she's like, yeah, I'll do it. And so, you know, we all look at each other, no, you know, that's right, you know, she's gonna get naked. And next thing you know, Cossack, you know, pulls the cock block move and like, you know, he acted like it was his girlfriend. He was like, no, 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 no. No, only topless, only topless. It was a good move, it was a good move because it'd been too raunchy, I guess. It's funny the the image that people all over the world had of Menace is like, okay, we were like, you know, a skate company of like mostly black and Latino skaters and our image was like hip hop and all this shit, but like people like really thought we were like gangsters or some shit, you know? Like people have come up to me and said like the craziest stuff, especially in Europe, cause they were just like, whoa, these dudes are just like beating people up at the skate spot, you know, getting crazy. There was probably like two or three occasions where I went and I end up getting into a fight with somebody out in Europe. Like we're all in a bar in like Europe and um, there was like a wedding reception going on and somehow there was like this bouquet of flowers like that like you know it was just sitting there and I remember like I picked it up and I grabbed it and like I threw it into a group of skaters and they all like jumped and kind of like shredded it apart but it was actually from the real wedding or whatever and this gnarly like European dude like came up and like wanted to fuck me up and they're like hey dude you should probably go up to your room like this dude's like pretty pissed. And uh, I went up to the room, it was me, Fabian, and a girl Fabian was messing with. And this girl had like 666, like tattooed right above her like vagina. C pretty crazy girl. And um, I opened up the door and it was a dude and he like clocked me right in the face. And Fabian en ended up beating his ass. So he beat up the father of the bride in our hotel room. <laughs> I don't know, I can't get into that. But I know he liked to get us in trouble. <laughs> but he was crazy too, you know, but I guess I was too, so we, it was no big deal. <laughs> it's all a good time. You know, everyone would come around and want to talk and hang out. You know, all the hip hop kids and the hip hop skater guys, like, oh, they'd, it would be like uniforms. They'd walk up in a menace uniform. It was ridiculous. And that was a big, we went to Germany one time, the whole stadium was menace uniforms. It was like Joey's and, Eric's and Fabi, like dudes trying to look like us, it was crazy. And we weren't even doing nothing in the contest, you know what I mean? We weren't gonna win. <laughs> we got to do everything, we'd go to like great hotels, we'd have a great time, we'd, we'd, we'd have stacks of it and weed, you know what I mean? We had skateboards galore, we flew, we got to go on all the A-plus tours. So we'd go to Germany, we'd go to Switzerland, Italy, everywhere, 
and that, you know, I can't beat that. I remember, you know, I, they used to tell me, yeah, well, you know, you're not gonna make it in skateboarding. And I'd be like, really? Okay, we'll see about that. We'd go on tour and the overwhelming presence of Mena's product that was out there, like denim and, you know, jackets and boards and all these different things. I remember it, it was out there. And if I had to gauge based on what I saw, it was definitely successful financially. Looking back on it, like, you, you never think, like, this is going to end one day. You know, you're like, I skate for Menace. We're the shit. We don't even need to skate. We got the best image. You know, like, Kareem is the man. And he's, like, he's basically telling me, like, we're going to be chilling for life. And you believe that shit, yo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, you're my idol. I'm, I, 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 I'm hanging out with you. You're telling me that we're straight, we're good. I see the way you're living. You got a pocket full of money every day. And I'm like, you know, I believe that shit. Fishy from day one. <laughs> Biggest check you ever get on like your board releases, boom, bam. Big check, wow, dude, I made this much, like bam. Then it, then it goes like, whoa. Then, you know, then it stays at a steady, like, you know, it was like, you know, checks just got started getting smaller. You know, it was like, hint, hint. You know what I mean? Like, and not that boards weren't selling, it's just like, you know, fucking cutting the checks. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know where the other money went, but who knows? When did we get these? So this was after Menace, obviously, MNC. So this must have been the, when we were starting MNC, when we had to change the name the first time, I guess. I mean, that was a huge blow, bro. I'll be honest with you. That, that, was, that was a MNC. huge blow. We'd be on tour, and the kids would still be referring to Menace. Oh, but right. we'd be wearing an All City shirt, and they'd be like, oh, what's All City? You know, the trademark lawyers fought it out, and they said that MNC was still not, you know, enough of a change, and that's when we had to do the All City thing. And then, as soon as we maybe thought we were getting a little bit of momentum, it came again. And I guess All City was owned by Russell Simmons. Fat and, farm, man. Ooh. And, you know, it was just a big old thing. And then finally, man, when Kareem City locked Star. down City Stars, and... So it had four names. Three. Well, there's Menace, Well, the MNC, MNC. yeah. Yeah, yeah. you can say four. All City, yeah. City Stars. Yeah. That's just basic business. If you trying to push a universal product and you change the name every three months, like, people aren't gonna, like, the people aren't that smart. They, you gotta you drill it into their heads and then, you think Girl would be as good as if they had to change their name three times? You know, maybe, but. That stung us, man. I, that definitely probably put a big hiccup in the business. If it stayed Menace, I think that, that marketing would have been just through the roof. You wouldn't have been able to stop it. 